In this video, we're gonna expand on the room system we implemented in the last game to actually allow going between rooms. So we've created an exit dictionary that exists on each room. So you'll see that now we start in a house and I am allowed to go east. If I try and go west or a different direction, it'll give me an error saying there's no exit there. And if I try and go east, it'll tell me, hey, you've gone east, you're now outside. And you'll see I can go back west to the room we were just in. So with that, let's get started. So we need to add exits to our rooms now. And the way we're gonna do that is to actually use dictionaries. We're gonna add a dictionary to each room and that dictionary is gonna be the exits from that room. And we're gonna add some nice helpers to automatically connect um, one room to another and vice versa so you don't have to manually set up both sides of a connection. So if you go from house to outside, you don't also have to connect outside the house, it'll happen automatically. So in order to do that, let's first go to our room script. And here we're gonna to need to add exits. So I'm gonna say variable exits, and this is gonna be a dictionary, and we'll just make it an empty dictionary for now. Now we could make this an export variable that you would be able to edit from the editor, and we might do that in the future, but I think we're gonna try and do it from code right now. And I know we keep kind of going back and forth on, should we do it by the editor? Should we do it by code? The right answer to that question is pretty contextual. Any specific decision about should you do it in the editor or should you do it in code does not necessarily have a right answer. Sometimes you're gonna mix and match. Sometimes you'll stick to one, sometimes you'll stick to the other. I think right now I would like to have things in the editor as much as possible because again, looking forward to potential future features, it'll make it easier to have a visual connector, a visual map, to have rooms that we can edit totally from the editor without having to go to code. But we're not quite there yet. There's a lot of foundation we have to build. And so I think if we do things via code first, when it doesn't make sense to do it via the editor, it'll be easy enough to change over later on. So making our rooms be visual was pretty easy to do them in the editor, but to actually connect them is gonna take a little bit more work. And I think it's gonna be easier to start off doing it via code. So that's why we're kind of flip-flopping back and forth. Again, feel free to experiment as you want with your own game to try and do different things. But I think for now, we're gonna keep our connections via code and we'll try and change that later on if we get enough time in this series. So let's think about what it means to connect a room. Well, we're probably gonna want a function, right? And we'll call this function connect exit, I guess we'll say. And we're gonna need a couple things. Whenever we call this function, we need to say which direction this exit is in. So we will say direction. And we'll make this a string for now. We might have an enum later um, about potential directions that we can use. But for now, we'll just do a string. And so we need to have a direction and then we also need a room to connect it to. So this is gonna be the other room that we are gonna connect this direction to. And one thing I wanna to do to make this really easy is I don't wanna to have to connect the exit both ways. So like if I have a house, right, and I can go outside, uh, I think I mentioned this before, but I don't wanna to have to connect the house to the outside and then also the house or the outside back to the house if possible. Now there are sometimes you might not want that to be the case. So you might have to adjust for your own game, but right now at least I don't have plans for one way connections. I want them to be both. And so I'm gonna bake that into our connecting function. We might eventually, you know, one thing you could do is have a separate like func connect exit one way that you could call. So that, that might be a really easy way to do this, but for now we're just gonna do this. And so what I wanna do is actually have a match statement here because I'm planning on having pretty standard connection names. So if I say match direction, and let's say that direction is west, this will make a lot of sense in just a second. I can say exits of direction equals room. And one thing I can do to make this connection automatic is also say room.exits of east equals self okay so i'm not saying this is exactly what i want to have also i think um that there's a sick i can't a reference room here because it's cyclical but that's fine um sometimes Gido gets freaked out if you reference the class name from within that class or from another class there's there's some weird stuff there but um so what i'm doing here is saying hey if the direction we want to connect is west then create an entry for West in our this room's exits and connect it to our new room. But in the new room's exits, connect the inverse of that, which is East, um, connect that to ourself, to this room. 
And so this is kind of verbose. I'm gonna, we're gonna add a way to change this later, but say I can do the same thing for East and I can do exits and basically the same thing here. So I'm actually just gonna like add all these for the four cardinal directions and then follow up in a second. Okay, so here you can see I've added all four cardinal directions and then I'm connecting this other room, the inverse of that. So west is east, east is west, north, south, south, north, etc. So what this is gonna do is just make it really easy if we wanna connect things in the four cardinal directions to just automatically connect both ways of that connection. If you don't wanna do that, or you wanna use something besides the cardinal directions, you could add a, or a third parameter perhaps that says like override, um, whoops, override direction or something like this. So you could make this a Boolean, you could say bool, and you could default it to false. And then if it's true, you could then not use this match statement and then instead have an override and you could pass that in as maybe another fourth optional parameter. So just some options there, just because you do it this way doesn't mean you have to stick to um, connecting it automatically. You could have multiple connections, for example, connect exit um, both ways, connect one way, connect override, connect rant, whatever you can do, you know, and you can also make this more than just the four cardinal directions. You could do up and down, you could do portal to portal. Um, you can do Northwest to Southeast, for example, you can do whatever you want. So this system is not actually that rigid. It's pretty flexible, but I just wanted to show this as a really easy way that we're going to get off the ground running quickly by connecting rooms. Okay, so we have this connect function, but where are we gonna actually connect these from? Where are we gonna call this function? And I think where we wanna do this is in our room manager. So this is why we added this node earlier, is we could do it in our game state, but I want our game to really handle kind of connecting between our player input and our responses. Um, and it, it shouldn't really have to know about how rooms are being set up. So in our room manager, we're actually gonna add a script. And here what we're gonna do is just in ready so let me clear everything out except this there is a way to get rid of all the boilerplate comments on these Godot or gd script templates but i just never get around to doing it um but what we want to do is manually connect all these rooms so first let's add another room so if i duplicate our house room and i'm going to say this is outside room let me just drag this over here so we can kind of see um i'm going to say you are just outside this would be um, you are in like outside in the village or something like that. Um, and so what I want to do is connect these two together. And what I can say is house room dot connect exits. And here we're going to connect an exit. Um, so if we look here, I'm trying to keep this, uh, keep our room manager the same, looking the same as how we actually want to connect it. So if our house room is on the left, then we want to connect our outside room to the east. So from out house to outside. And then so we can do is connect to the east, and this is going to be outside room. Now remember, because connect exit is currently connecting both ways, we don't have to say outside room dot connect exit west house room. It'll happen automatically. And in order to remember that, I like to work outside or inside out. So I start with our house room and connect all the rooms there. And then if I go to our next room, I only connect the further connections from there. I don't connect back and you just kind of work your way inside out. So that's just one way to do it. Um, again, you'll find a way that works for you. But now when our game starts, we're going to connect our house room and our outside room. That connection is going to happen both ways. And what we can now do um, is actually print out the connections that our current room has anytime we move to a new room. So in order to do that, we can come to our command processor. And remember, we are keeping track of our current room here. So we can get the exits of that room. And one thing we wanna do now is when we're changing rooms, we wanna print out the available exits for that room. So how can we do this? Well, one thing we can do is we can say, we'll just say var exit string, and we're gonna say new room dot exits. So first we're gonna get the exits. And now remember exits is a hash or a dictionary, which is a hash. And so one way or a hash map at least. And what we can do now is actually get the keys here. So we can say dot keys, and this is a function that's gonna return an array of keys. Now we already know what we can do with arrays, so I'm actually gonna convert this to be a pool string array. And so now we're gonna have an array of strings, and what we can do here is join, just like we're doing below, but we're gonna join with a space. And so we're gonna get a space separated list of exits. And so this is gonna be a string, so we are going to do 
same as above, we're gonna do exits and then plus exit string. And now when we start our game, we'll see that we have an exit of the east. And we're not currently wired up, so if say go west or go east, nothing happens. But you're seeing that we can now output the actual exits that the room we're in has. And so now we can actually wire up changing rooms from our go command. So there's a couple things we need to keep in mind as we try and do this. One is that we only want to let the user go to a valid room. You can only use a valid exit. So in our go command, there's a couple of conditions we'll need. First is to say, if current room dot exits dot keys dot includes, and then here we're going to have second word. Oh, whoops, not as a string there. So if our current exits includes um, the second word. So if the second word is West, we want to make sure that West is an actual key in our hash. So if it includes it, then we can say you go to second word, etc. But we can do else. We'll have another message, which will just be return. That is not a valid exit from this room. Or you can say something a little less. I mean, that sounds super stiff. <laughs> Maybe we can say like, um, this room has no exits in that direction. That sounds a little bit uh, less like a programmer speak here. Um, so yeah, now we are saying, hey, if this is an actual um, room this way, then you go there, else there will just print out a message to help the player saying, hey, you can't actually go that way, it's not a valid direction. And so this is almost good, except the one thing we need to do is actually call our change room um, function here. And so what we need to pass in is the room in that direction. So we can say uh, change room. And how are we gonna get this new room? Well, we can say current room dot exit, and we can get second word. And we know that this will be a valid key here because we're already, uh, we're calling this includes here. We're only doing this if the second word, this direction is included in the keys for our current room. So we're gonna get a valid exit here, which will return an actual room, and then we're gonna change our room to that. Okay, so what we can do is we're gonna return you go this way. I'm gonna actually add um, a period here, and that way it'll be a little bit more grammatically correct. Okay, awesome, so I think we're good to go, except, um, oh, Actually, I always, sorry, I do this sometimes. It's not includes, it's actually has here. So on arrays, the function to find something or to see if it has something is just has. Um, I, I kind of get that confused sometimes, sorry about that. So I think if we run this now, we should see that our game works. We're in a house, we can go east. So what if I go west? We should see our error message, which we do. This room has no exit in that direction. But if I go east, we should see we are now outside. It is outside in the village. Exit is west. So if I say go east now, we get the error message. If I say go west, boom, we are back inside the house. So look at that. Just like that, we are able to move between our rooms. We have added a simple system of exits, which are just dictionaries that live on each of our rooms. And we can go west, we can go east and all and you can easily customize this like i said super easy to add other directions really easy to add another function to connect things one way or to connect things um, where maybe the uh, message between each room is kind of different you can customize this as needed it should be pretty easy to do but we've handled our ability to go back and forth between rooms now okay so things are looking pretty good uh, there's just one weird thing though if i type go east you'll see that it gives us the output about the new room we're in. You're now in outside, it's outside in the village, etc. before it actually says what command we want. And it, it's kind of confusing. It'd be a lot better if this go east appeared before this text right here that tells us what just happened. And so we're gonna change that now. And in order to do that, we're gonna get rid of this signal that we created earlier this video. And I know it's kind of quick um, when we change rooms. And the reason why is because this is, so I wanted to show this signal and how it worked to show one way to do it. You could either change your process command system to use signals almost exclusively. This would be one way to do it. You could change all of these returns to emit a signal. But because we're using a system where we're returning values all around, we're actually gonna get rid of this response generated here. And what we're gonna do is instead of changing room, emitting a signal, it's just gonna return strings here. And we're gonna add this return value. And so in the places we're using this, we actually need to 
return this. Um, so in change room, we're gonna say uh, change response. This is gonna be a variable. And then we're gonna say, so you go this way, second word. But what we're actually gonna do is, is do kind of the same thing down here where we're joining the string together. And so now that we have our change response, we wanna output this in the same message, but below this message saying, hey, you do go this way. We're confirming what the user did. So it, we're kind of saying, this is what the user did. Here's the new thing because of that. Here's the new room you're in. And so what we're gonna do, or what we're gonna do here, very similar to what we did before, is a pool string away string array and because we are making so many of these it's probably a good idea now for us to um, make some kind of a helper function that'll do a lot of this work and this joining and concatenating for us um, so we can do that in just a second but so we're going to make an array we want the first element to be you go here you go west etc because we want that to appear first and then after that we're going to add our change response and so here we'll have this and again we want to join this and we're going to join it our delimiter is going to be a new line and so now if I do this, you'll see that if I go east, it looks way better. You go east, you are now here, it's outside the village, here are your exits. So this is this just looks way better. One thing you'll notice we've lost though is that we're not actually outputting um, the welcome text or the initial room text at the beginning. So we've gotta change that real quick. And the reason why is because this initialize here, this is returning um, a string, but we're not actually uh, returning it from initialize so we can do that and again we might have to change this later on this we're kind of doing some fluid work here and changing things a lot on the fly the reason why is because with a game like a text adventure there's just so much background stuff you've got to start building up there's a lot of foundation that's why it took so long really even to get to adding gameplay mechanics to our game it's just because there's a lot of different systems you're trying to build up so apologies that we're kind of overriding and changing and editing deleting etc as we go but that's just kind of how ga game development is and as you continue to develop your game you'll realize better and worse things and or ways to do it and um, some of this has been planned, ways that I've tried to change it and knew we'd be changing it. Some of it is just as I've been making these tutorials, I've realized there might be better ways to do it. So thanks for sticking with it. And I hope that this process of iteration um, just kind of introduces you to what game dev is really like and helps you start building some of those iterative skills on your own and kind of identifying better ways to do things as you are developing. So with that said, we're now returning something from initialize. So in our game, what we can do is say var uh, initial or whoops so we'll say like starting room response or something this is gonna be a string and what we can do is just handle response generated etc for this one so we can say handle response generated uh, for starting room response and we don't have this response generated signal anymore we took it away because we're not using it so we can actually get rid of this connect line and handle response generated is kind of not the um, right word here because this is a past tense action but we want it to be more imperative in the imperative tense now because it's a function we're calling to do or to, to do something it's not handling a signal that was called so we can change this to be create response so we're kind of differentiating between this create response method which will actually create it itself and then add response which adds it to the game so there are two separate things so we'll call this create response and it, then it kind of makes sense. This function creates our response instance and gives it its values. And then add response is what actually puts it into the game. And so now that we have create response, we can come up here and say create response, create response. And now when we play our game, we'll see our initial welcome text and our initial starting room text. So I can go west, error, go east. And now you go east, here you are. And this is just a lot more clear, it looks a lot better, and we've now standardized our command processing system so it's always returning values. Again, we might change it later on if we find a better way, but for now it's just working one standard way across every command word, every function it has. So that's really nice. And here we go, we've added exits to our game, we've added the ability to move between rooms, and we've added helpful error messages when you try and go somewhere you can't go. So I'm really excited about this, guys. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video and found it helpful. If you have, a like and subscribe is much appreciated. It supports the channel. We'd love to have you in our Discord server. Link to that is in the description below. Feel free to ask any questions about the tutorial there. And if you find my work helpful, buy me a coffee on Buy Me a Coffee. It helps me continue to make great videos and is much appreciated. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. I'll see you in the next video.